Good to see you guys. Um, we're going to continue working on some more stand-up clinching techniques. And uh, Coach Matt and I were discussing how these clinch positions are really interesting because it's really where all the different martial arts that we study, they kind of come together. So whether it's jiu-jitsu, wrestling, Muay Thai, judo, sambo, what, even boxing, they all involve some type of clinching and it's at that range where you can blend the different styles and you can really, it almost becomes a martial art in and of itself in this clinch position. So um, I'm gonna show several things off of that this week. Coach Matt was doing the uh, preliminary uh, movements of the Thai plum or the Thai clinch, which involves our hands being in this position. So we can steer the person around, we can knee the body, we can steer the person around, we can knee the face, we can kind of shake the head, we can elbow, we can get under them and head, but there's all kinds of stuff. So, but how do we connect that to a grappling technique, right? So the proper thing for Alex to do, like if he's coming from a Thai boxing perspective, is to try to get chest to chest and get his head up because he doesn't want his head in this folded position. Here it's a uh, it's very weak position for him and I have a lot of offense. So he'll start to try to frame and get chest to chest and stop me from like pulling his, his head down and folding it. So when I feel his resistance to my pull here, all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make him earn it. Like if he doesn't really get his head up, I'll keep his head folded down. But as he starts to posture, I'm just gonna quickly let my hands go. I'm gonna throw him in a backwards circle at the same time, I just change levels. And now I'm in a double leg position. And because he's standing tall of his own, you know, his own uh, desire to get out of that neck uh, entanglement, it makes the level change very easy. Whereas if I was to try to shoot a double from a further range, he has a lot more capability to sprawl and just shut my shot down, you know? So from this tie clinch here, I'm pulling his head down. Don't go too crazy because it's very fatiguing on your partner's neck. You don't want to hurt them, but have them give you a little upward resistance as you start to feel and gain posture, release, level change, move forward, double leg, okay? Now let's look at another position where I've got the person attacking me with this position, okay? There's, there's more than one way to do this. I'm gonna show you, um, this is more of like a wrestling way to get out of it. Okay, so I'm gonna pick one side and I'm gonna reach deep over the top of one of his uh, collar ties here. All right, and from here, I'm gonna push my shoulder right underneath his tricep and that pops that grip off, okay? So I go, can you see from that angle, Coach Matt? Let's see. So I reach deep and I just push my chest forward. I'm pushing through at an angle like this. So go ahead and keep it pretty strong. It just pops it right off, okay? Now, he's really out of position. I don't have a lot of time here. He's gonna move his hips back and circle his elbow back. So, while I've got his arm here, I'm gonna take my knee and just put it right behind his hamstring and I'm just gonna bump it as I pull with this hook that I have, that really dumps him. It's a, it happens really fast and it's quite shocking to the person because they think they're about to jack you up with some knee strikes. If you just pop that off and just dump him, you know? <laughs> so, one more time real slow, all right? reach deep, I get kind of a 45 degree angle, I'll start pulling and driving my chest forward. As soon as the position pops off, my knee comes behind, and I'm just buckling his knee as I pull, okay? And that's fine for training at the house. You don't need to dump him completely on the ground. All right, hope you had fun with that. We'll see you guys tomorrow.